Radio Tubers of Buddies asked for some help. We're going from this to this. We'll load up the van with as much stuff as I can put in there. Get some batteries in there, get some mounts, we'll get all my tools, multimeters, clamp meters, and all that sort of good stuff. And we'll see what we can put together. Now this is a completely off-grid system. There is no grid connected at all. In fact, the, the nearest grid connection is a couple of kilometers away from his home. Um, in the bush somewhere. So let's get in the car. Let's go for a drive. Let's see if we can help this guy out and give him a little bit extra power in his life. Felt very happy to see that those batteries actually didn't move around too much over those dirt roads. They're pretty rough. But it's all exactly how I remember it. It's not pretty, but it does work quite well and has worked well over the past couple of years, I guess. Batteries are still charging. The pip's taken care of all the charge and discharge duties. So let's get this thing upgraded. First thing we should do is upgrade to a PCM60X. Love these little units, 60 amps charging at 48 volts. This one is only 24 volts and I got, what is it, 14, 250 watt Canadian solar solar panels being connected into it. So it'll slightly surpass what should be going into it. But considering the angle of the panels and the direction that they face, this won't be a problem at all, I reckon. Now these power wall mounts, if you're interested in them, I have all the designs and the plans for free listed in the description below. And they will be supporting about 52 kilos. So about seven and a half kilos each, I think from memory. So I'm gonna need every single screw hole populated to hold these things on so they don't move anywhere. The cells are 157p in a 7s configuration, so it's about 10 kilowatt hours of storage at 24 volts. Looks nice and neat and tidy. You've got the bathroom already pre-configured on there for the long longs. We're going to actually put everything into some generic electrical boxes with some bin rail mounts screwed in. Now I'm not altogether sure on how this is all going to go together at this point, so you know it chops and changes a little bit, but it does work in the end, I think. Trying to get everything as level as possible. Trying to make it look neat and professional, right? But we've got the Zed Benny disconnecting from the solar panels. And one thing, uh, this is my first time doing this sort of thing from beginning to end myself. And getting these glands to lay out right and look look correct. Oh, geez, I'll tell you what. Uh, I, I had to get creative, I promise you. Make sure everything's tightened up and start to pull these cables through. Now this is 25 square millimeter cable coming from the PCM60X into the combiner box. So all the old cables out. Gonna add some glands and stuff here in as well so I can conduit it up and make it all look nice and consistent. Now I, I'm not altogether sure whether or not in the end I'll end up putting conduit all the way up to the bus bars or all the way up to the terminals. Uh, I think it'll look really neat and tidy, but I've still got to add a shunt trip in here at one stage. So it, it might come down the track a little bit, I think. Mine's like doing this box. I reckon I probably should have laid it all out a little bit better on the bench, drilled all the holes first, and then actually, you know, installed it all. But, you know, the, the, the result was still all right. I still like the result. Getting some power around to the Watchmon 4 for their 2 amp fuses, making sure the leads aren't too long and making it look nice and neat and tidy. Making sure everything's nipped, nipped up nice and tight here. 
Uh, this is where this whole project sort of took a detour. Uh, for the worst, unfortunately for me. I'll let you watch this little montage and I'll catch up with you again in a minute and let you know what happened. Rightio tubers, so that was the, probably the stupidest thing I've done as an installer or a technician or whatever you call me. You know, I, I know to plug shit in right. Uh, what happened was, I had to stop the filming. I tripped the fuses, I plugged it all in, I was rushing for the shot, I needed to get home. Um, I plugged it all in and I just turned it all back on again and then everything went up in smoke. Well, I, not everything went up in smoke. Long on started smoking. Um, and the Watchmon just stopped working. I don't think I noticed any smoke from the Watchmon. Uh, but what I did was I plugged in the shunt into, uh, no, there's the, the cell monitor cable into the shunt. Turned it on, everything went south. Uh, I know better. Um, it is clearly marked blue and red. And then the cables you get from Batroom. And this is what I prepared earlier, a blue, oh, blue and yellow, sorry. And then they've got the blue and the yellow there, I don't know if you can see it. Uh, because all my ca custom cables are custom, I just screwed up. I swore a lot, that's why it's not on camera. I didn't record putting this one in or changing over all the long mons, but I had to replace all seven long mons. And this just doesn't power up anymore. You plug it in and it's just nothing. So it's basically bin fodder. I'm hoping the expansion board's fine and I'm hoping I can just buy a watch one solo and get my rig back up and running because this is mine from home. We were always planning to put the BMS in. It was just the fact that I just, yeah, we're trying to make a video, right? At any rate, let's get this installed. Let's do this. Grab the shut, get it all installed. A bit of rewiring to do, so let's get that done. We've got the Watchmon Solar at the bottom and then we're going to put the shunt on top of it and get all the cables rerouted and stuff. It took me a few goes to actually get all this to settle in and get it, get it all fitting right. But I still have a few more components to fit for the hot water system. That's to come, a little preview at the end of the video. But I think at the end of the day, it all looked well and considering what I packed in there, it's not such a bad job. Well, tubers, I think this lot of wiring is done. Now it's time to turn it all on and see if it works. So first of all, we'll have to turn on the solar up here. Now we do not have a shunt trip in here yet. I do have one coming for it. I haven't got it here yet and that'll be controlled by the Watchmon. We'll turn that back on again. That kicks straight in. We've got 26.5 volts there. There is not much sun, there's pretty good cloud cover. Show me one watt. There we go. Batteries are charging again. Bit extreme. Oh, there we go. Now it's ramping up. It should go up to 20, 25 amps, 30 amps, something like that. There's only a 24 volt system. And there's not a great deal of sun. So now we will, uh, I'm going to leave this turned off for now. I'm not going to do the bait room yet. We will turn these shunts on, these trips on. Circuit breakers, whatever you call them. Power button. Oh yeah, there we go, we're back up and running again. I am not touching the 240 volt. It's still sitting there exactly how it was when I arrived. Uh, eventually it will run through here and then the spark will either put another box down here or join it to the box that's attached to the house. I don't know how that works. But what do you reckon, tubers? 
That's a mighty good use of some 18650 batteries right there, I reckon. You know, they were just sitting in my shed unused, so it made sense to bring them out here. We now have 10 kilowatt hours of storage. Um, a big increase on that old battery bank. Uh, I reckon that was, that even those 880 amp hours, so those four there, that bank and then that bank, and they're all six volt batteries. Uh, I reckon was only giving him three or I think three would be generous kilowatt hours per night and it should have been 10 or 15 so they have well and truly done its day I have to thank the lead for their service they're probably going to go to a recycle yard I don't know that is all commissioned up and all working the shunts are beeping away the watch monitors beeping away all the cables are there uh, we're charging at 27 amps by the look of it shunt volt 27 volts or 20 uh, what is it 21 amps almost 600 watts and the battery voltage is pretty pretty close that's about as close as it gets but i have bunk charged the second cell up there i think i showed it earlier in the video it was just rather low the second from the right there so there is something wrong with one of those batteries i'll have to investigate it but they haven't been cycled so i'm not too concerned you know there are second hand batteries so we're always going to have problems Achievers, this one has been an awesome one to do. 10 kilowatt hours of storage. Now we've got to put in this hot water system. Uh, probably should go about here. Power's going to run out of the wall here. I don't know how that's going to go, but that's the Sparky's problem, not mine. Now, yeah, well, thank you very much for tuning in. Here you can see a quick overview of what we're doing in the next video with the hot water. I can give you a hint, it's all up and running. My patrons have already seen this, so to all my old and new patrons, thank you very much for tuning in, and I'll see you on the next one.